Hi, my name is Ray Fernandez from Bridge Marina. I'm here to give you some basic boat safety information to keep you safe on the water this summer. Boating is a fun, safe, comfortable experience on the water for you, your family, and your crew. However, we have to remind you that boating also has an inherent, uncontrollable level of risk. Please pay close attention today because a life you save could be your own. The driver is responsible for him and his crew to wear life jackets while aboard a boat. Everyone should wear a U.S. Coast Guard approved properly fitted life jacket while on the water. Those that are especially susceptible to drowning risks, elderly, physically capable, or children should wear a life jacket at all times. In the event someone were to fall in the water without a life jacket, first thing we'd want to do is make sure we turn off the ignition of the boat. Next, we want to locate our throw cushion and throw line. We want to deploy that throw line and throw the cushion to the individual in the water. If you miss, you can retrieve that throw cushion and throw again. When the person in the water grabs the throw cushion, we can pull them back to the boat using the throw line. It is illegal and negligent for you to operate or allow others to operate the boat while under the influence of alcohol, drugs, and or medicines. Noise, sun, waves, these all greatly increase impairment while on the water. So please be safe. So one should never put body parts or people in between the boat and the dock. This is a place for fenders. Fenders protect the boat from the dock and the dock from the boat. Fenders should be installed before docking or before leaving the dock. When there's anyone in the water or within 30 feet of the boat in the water, the engine should be off in the key out of the ignition. When folks are returning from swimming, please do a head count to make sure everyone's in the boat before we were to start the engine. The emergency engine stop switch is the first choice to turn the engine off if someone were to fall in the water. The driver is to inform their crew how to use the emergency stop switch in case of an emergency. The emergency stop switch should be attached to the driver at all times, so in the event the driver were to fall overboard, the engine would turn off. As a reminder, boats have no brakes, so it could be challenging to even impossible to stop your boats depending on your speed. In order to slow the boat down, one should first put it in neutral. That's akin to pressing your brakes slightly if you were in a car. If you needed to stop more abruptly, you would put the boat into reverse. Please remember though, if you do not remove it from reverse, it's going to start moving backwards next. Slow down far in advance of wherever you plan to stop. Also, you should prepare your lines and or fenders before you get to the dock. When nearby objects and or docks, you want to move in a slow, deliberate pattern. Go only as fast as you wish to hit the dock. Always be aware of your surroundings and drive at a slow speed. The driver should always maintain a safe lookout by sound, sight, or assistance from others. The driver should recruit crew members to assist with lookout. The driver should be aware of the water conditions, other vessels, and their boat location at all times. Overloading or improper loading of guests and or gear on the boat can be a dangerous situation. Proper distribution would be to evenly spread your weight and or passengers about the boat. You do not want to overload the bow, starboard, port, or stern of the boat, as this could cause submarining and or capsizing of the vessel. Vessels have a specific capacity limit. The greater the weight, the greater the challenge and or risk in operating the boat. It is illegal for passengers to sit on the bow, gunnels, or stern of the boat, as passengers could fall into the water and pass under the boat. Please stay inside the boat and in seats while the boat is operating. Safe speeds in a boat are at a speed at which you are comfortable and capable. Never proceed at a speed that is beyond your ability. Always obey no wake zones. Please proceed at a safe speed that allows you to steer away or stop the boat should a situation arise. The number one rule of boating is to avoid collision at all times. Slow down, steer away, or stop to avoid collision. When approaching a boat head on, it is prudent for you to steer to the right or to your starboard side, so you and the other boat pass port side to port side. The person that is on your starboard side has the right of way and you should yield to their stern. So again, if a person is coming on your right side or your starboard side, you should yield to their course and go to their stern. If a boat is approaching you from your port or your left side, that boat should yield to you and let you continue your course and they should pass to your stern. But remember, the number one rule of boating is to avoid collision at all costs. When overtaking another boat, you must yield to their course until acknowledged. First choice is to pass on the port, the left side, if boat space and water conditions permit. If passing on the port is not the best option, you may pass on the starboard side again, if boat traffic and water conditions permit. You should always allow ample space to yield to the boat you're overtaking in case they change course. Signal twice if you're passing on the port left side 
or signal once if you're passing on the starboard, the right side. As a power boater, we should give way to all boats that are under their own power and or sail. This would be paddle boards, kayaks, canoes, sailboats. We should also give way to any commercial vessels as they have the right of way. The channel markers are in place to give you a relatively safe navigation path while boating. The driver should always be aware and review his chart and the channel markers before navigating. As you navigate, you should be aware of your course and location at all times. The driver should stay as far to the right as is safe, practical, and possible when navigating through a channel. There are two colored markers. One is green and one is red. They mark the outermost parts of the channel. When heading inland or with a sea at my back, I want the red on the right as I'm returning to land. If I were to reverse this and be heading towards sea with land behind me, I'd want my green on my right and my red on my left. So remember, red right returning. While you're on the water, you will come across information buoys. These are here to give you information about the waterway. A popular one may be a no wake buoy. This is a white buoy with a circle on it. And this would indicate to drive at a no wake speed. You will also come across hazard buoys. These typically have a diamond on them. Another type may be a restricted area buoy. There's a diamond with a cross through the center. This would be an area you would not enter with your boat. As a driver, you should always be aware of the navigational aids and information buoys that you come across on the water and react accordingly. The driver should not only review their chart and plan their course before departing, they should use that chart throughout the day. Do not rely solely on electronics. Within the chart, you will find hazards, water depths, channel markers, and other safety information that will help you throughout your day. Please stay in the channel, avoid shallow areas, and please do not follow other paths of other boats as they may not know where they're going. So the driver should be very aware of the tide. A rising tide brings water into the body of water. A lowering tide is the water leaving that body of water. The water rises and lowers approximately five feet every six hours. However, the tide does change every day, so please pay attention to your daily tide charts. Tidal changes causes current. Those currents can be stronger in restricted or confined areas, such as bridges or narrow channels. So so please be careful while you're on the water. As a boater, you must proactively monitor the weather. Abrupt changes in wind and or temperature can be an indication of changing weather. If you find yourself caught in severe weather, the first thing you should do is have the entire crew and yourself put on a life jacket. After all your life jackets are on, you should find protection near the shoreline or at a dock. In case of emergency or breakdown, the driver and crew should put on their life jacket. Next, you should deploy your anchor safely to stop the boat. Then you may call CETO and or the Coast Guard for assistance. The driver and crew should know how to properly use a VHF radio. The VHF radio is a push to talk device. When you wish to speak, press and hold the PTT button. When you wish to listen, let go. The radio can be used to make emergency calls on channels 9 and 16. Those emergency calls can be Pan Pan, CETO, or Mayday. A Pan Pan call is a non-life-threatening emergency. A Mayday call is a life-threatening emergency. A CETO call is for mechanical breakdowns or strandings. In case of emergency, and if you need to use your visual distress signal, break out your visual distress signal, rotate the top to the right, or clockwise, and hold at the highest point of your boat so other boaters can see you. You may also wish to unfurl your visual distress flag and wave it in an area that other boaters can see you. Signal devices are used to communicate with other boaters while you're on the water. Please only use it in valid situations. In the event of a fire, locate your fire extinguisher, remove its safety pin, point and shoot it at the base of the fire until the fire is extinguished. In order to start your boat, please make sure there's no one in the water swimming. The engine should be trimmed down and in the water. The boat should be in neutral gear. Your emergency safety switch must be installed. Put your key into your ignition, turn it to the right, pass accessory. Once it starts, let go of the key. Your engine is started. When controlling a boat, there are three gear positions, forward, neutral, and reverse. Forward gear is indicated with an F on your control and is moving the control towards the bow of the boat. Reverse is indicated with an R on your control and is moving that control towards the stern of the boat. Using steering in combination with your thrust in forward or reverse steers the boat where you'd like it to go. If you turn your wheel to the right or to the starboard side and put it in forward gear, the boat will move to the right or to the starboard side. Returning it into neutral stops the boat from continuing to move to the right. This is called the point and shoot method. You can use these controls to accurately and intentionally move this boat in tight quarters. In addition to forward, neutral, and reverse, we have throttle advance in forward or reverse. If you're to put the boat in forward gear and then advance the throttle past the F area, the boat will go faster or accelerate. To decelerate, we need to bring the controls back near the F control or back to neutral. Same works for reverse. The boat will advance faster the further we put it in reverse. The trim angle controls the engine position in or out of the water. 
we do suggest that you trim up in shallow areas and bring that engine position so the prop is under the water but as far away from the bottom of the water body as you can. The trim also affects the attitude of the boat while underway. If you trim the engine all the way down or tuck it into the transom, it'll push the bow down on the boat and could cause the boat to plow water and or take water over the bow. If you trim the engine up or near the top of the water, away from the transom, you could find the boat porpoises or bounces up and down at the bow and the boat will slow down. As a general rule of thumb, when you slow down, you should trim up. So your boat has a multitude of gauges on it. You have a speedometer, which tells you how fast you're going. You'll have a tachometer, which tells you engine speed. You have a fuel gauge, which tells you the level of fuel you have in your boat. You may also have a trim gauge, which tells you the angle of the engine position. You may have a GPS chart plotter, which is going to tell you where you are on the water, as well as your depth. We do wish to remind boaters to not rely solely on your electronics. Please use your chart and maintain a constant lookout. And when you're going to a dock, you should have your dock lines, dock pole, and fenders out in advance and in place. So this way, when you get to your docking space, you're not trying to search for your dock lines and or fenders when you need them. When you arrive at your dock space, don't use humans or people parts as fenders. Once you're in your slip safely, use your dock lines to secure your boat safely inside the slip. The idea is to use opposing tensions or use opposing lines to support that boat inside the slip rather than using the fenders solely as your protection from the boat and the dock. When you're going to anchor, you should make sure you're anchoring out of the channel out of traffic in a safe area. We have significant enough water depth to make up for any tide changes. When anchoring, make sure you bring the boat to a complete stop, turn off your engine, and prepare your anchoring equipment. When you're setting out your anchor, deploying your anchor, always anchor from the bow of the boat. It's not necessary to throw your anchor and all your anchor line overboard. Rather, you should sound the water depth using your anchor and line by passing it through your arms and measuring your line till you hit the bottom. Once you feel you've hit the bottom of the water body, you should then measure out three to five times whatever that length was down. Example, if you ran three lengths of line through your arm before the anchor sounded the bottom, you would then let out approximately 15 lengths of line and then you'd secure that anchor line to the bow of your boat. To pull your anchor, unfasten your line from the cleat, manually pull up your anchor line and your anchor and stow it. Then you may go back and start your engine and be on your way. The engine should be off and the anchor should be deployed before anyone enters the water. A life jacket should be worn when entering the water for any reason. Before jumping in the water, someone should manually check the water depth to make sure it's safe. Once again, my name is Ray Fernandez from Bridge Marina. Thank you again for watching. Hope you have a fun, enjoyable, and safe experience with us on the water today.